Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb, and this is part six of my Shopify theme build series. We're getting really close to finishing up some of the simple templates, and we're starting to get to a point where I'm going to want to add a bit of JavaScript to, to kind of take it to the next level. One of those areas is the cart, and today we're going to be adding a library that Shopify built called Theme Cart to help with that. The first thing we want to do is we want to go over to NPM, which is a package manager for JavaScript and we want to look up Shopify so we're gonna if you, if you look at this name right here at Shopify slash theme hyphen cart and this is Shopify's JavaScript library made for interacting with the cart now before we get into implementation let's just have a quick look at this documentation so we've got the getting started here and we'll be looking at that in a minute but before that let's, let's scroll down here and look at some of the different methods we have avail available We've got this get state function that that just gets the state of the cart so it gets all the information about the cart and then further down we've got add item we've got update item and remove item clear items and so these are just a bunch of different functions that will allow us to either update the cart or get information about the cart so if you ever have any questions about how any of this works make sure you come back to this now all these things that are in red, like key here, these link out to somewhere else, right? So get item, and then it says pass in key, which isn't explained here, it doesn't make sense. And so if we click key really quickly, it takes us to the object documentation for a line item. And so this is why I was so big on a previous video about this objects page is because a lot of things end up coming back to just looking at the objects and, and, and getting an understanding about what properties are on these objects. Going back to that theme card documentation, let's scroll back up to the top to getting started so that we can get this added into our store. Within our project in the terminal, we need to add, add this package with yarn add, and then uh, within the files that we're gonna use it, we need to import it. First things first, let's do the yarn add at Shopify slash theme cart. And as we see, we've got, we got our successes there. So you see that it's been installed. We see that version 4.0.2 has been installed. And now we're good to go. We're not really gonna be making any changes to the front end. Uh, right now, I just wanna get this added for later use because when it comes to adding products to cart, uh, updating our cart, and just different things that I'm gonna be doing with the cart in the long run, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna end up needing this library. And so it's good to get it installed early. Let's open up inspect. We're going to be looking at the console and we're going to be doing most of our most most of today is going to be within the console and within the code. Now before we write any code, uh, I want to mention that be, before before you're going to be able to do this, there needs to be an update to the workflow. Now if you're start if you're if you're using workshop and you're using this specific workflow, if you if you're creating a new workflow after this video, then you shouldn't need to do this step. But for anybody who already started working with their workflow before today, you're going to need to, to make a quick update. And so let's open up workflow and let's go into tasks and theme. And so there are two lines that you need to update. Line number, so line number four, where we have this cont resolve and then uh, everything else, we're gonna need to add this line. And then within plugins, before this was an empty array, we're gonna need to add this resolve function here. And what this will do is it will allow, uh, it will allow the workflow to resolve any node modules that you're using. If you have a uh, Shopify Plus and you do have checkout enabled, then you'll also want to do that same exact thing within checkout. And also, if I actually stop running this for a second, you're going to need to, you're, you're also going to need to install this. And so the same way that we just installed theme cart, we're also going to need to install this. So I already have it installed, but what you would do is yarn, add, and then paste that in. And then you, if you want this to be a dev dependency, you can do dash dash dev. And if we look into package.json, 
you'll see that we have a plugin node resolve at version 11 within dev dependencies, right? And you'll also see that within normal dependencies, we have a Shopify theme card up here. So now moving on to actually implementing this, we can go into source and let's open up scripts and theme.js. But what we're going to do is we want to test cart. Now, in the long run, we're going to get more into JavaScript later on and, and into how you should be formatting your JavaScript and how you should be structuring these folders. But for now, we're just going to do everything within theme.js just because we're just testing this out, but we're not actually using it yet. So if we go back to the documentation, we have that import star as cart from Shopify theme cards. Let's copy that and paste it in here. And before we save this, let me yarn start again just to get this back to watching file changes. And so now I want to see if if this works at all. So let's say console.info cart. Refresh the page. And now we see we've got this, this object here that comes after the example code. And so that's all of the functions that come with theme cart. And so let's try one of them. And I'll say uh, cart dot, dot get state. And I'll run that function. Now before I run this, this is a promise based library. So what we're going to get back is just a promise. So refresh that. You see it says promise and status is pending. And so this isn't the proper way that you would want to, to display the information from this. Instead, what we would do is if I get rid of this and I say cart dot and now when I do cart dot, you can see that I get these, this information about the different functions that are on it, which is pretty handy. So I'll pick get state then, and then we just say data console.info data, right? Refresh that. And now we see an object that is all the actual cart data. So we've got our attributes, which we don't have any on our cart right now. We've got any discounts that are applied. And since we have uh, at this, you know, today we have, I have a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale running. And so we've got this 15% off sale here that you can see that that's added to the cart. If we go down here, we see item, cart, item count two. So we've got two items in the cart. And you can see, we can see all the pricing and, and all the different information on the cart. One thing you may run into is third parties who, who need to add products to cart for whatever reason. And you don't want the process to be difficult, right? And so to make it easy, what you can do is you can expose this library to the window. So right now, if we go back to the code, right, you'll see that we have this cart uh, object that has a bunch of information on it. But if I were to type cart in, in here, in the browser, we get an error, a reference error. Cart is, is not defined, doesn't exist. And that's because uh, the way this workflow works, it does a bunch of different things to transpile the code and it bundles it up into this one kind of large function. And then all that information within that function is kind of contained within it, right? You can't reach into it to get the information. But there are ways to, to reveal things. Uh, window dot cart, I'm gonna do a capital C equals cart. If I save that and go back to the front end, first I'm going to go window.cart just to show you that it doesn't exist, right? And then, but if I refresh the page, do the same thing. Now we have the same get state, and now you can run tests within the browser. Cart. You actually don't have to put window, you can just do cart.get state. That uh, there we go. That get state, my bad. That then get state to function and then dot then, and we get the same information back here, right? We get the two items of cart. We get you know the cart level discounts, and so this uh, this this. What we did here is we revealed this to the window so that now, if for whatever reason we need to use it on the window, we can. 
Now this is in no way a requirement. This is something that you can do if you feel like you're gonna need it in the future or you could just wait until that time comes and then you can add it or it may never come and you never add it, right? And so it's entirely up to you. So next I really quickly wanna go over some of the methods or functions that are available to you. And so if we go back to the documentation, we're gonna have this, at, we have add item, right? We've already talked about, uh, we've already talked about get state. Let's skip a few of these, and we're gonna cover add item, we'll cover remove item and clear items, and maybe update item as well. Cart dot add item dot then, and what's returned from add item is the item. So if we look at this, let's go up to the actual add item, what we get back is an item, which is gonna be the item that we added. So item. Console.info item. And if we go back, what does it take? So it takes ID and then it takes quantity and properties. And so if no quantity is specified, then one item is added. And we probably don't have this proper properties probably isn't required. So let's just add the item ID and just save that. Refresh the page over here. And if you look, we got this second object here that is a specific item. So that's the item that was added. And if we just hit up a few times, right there, it's, oh, we don't have cart added anymore. And so if we just refresh the page, it's gonna have added another one. But if we open this up, we see we now have three products and the top one is the Heather uh, Girlfriend Material Crop Sweatshirt. And I'm gonna also do uh, window.cart, add this back just to make it easier to use. And I'm gonna keep it lowercase, I think. And get rid of this. And then we're gonna stop doing this within, within the file because every time we reload the page, it's gonna add a new uh, product. So the next method I wanna go over is update. Now if we look at update, or update item, it's going to require the key and then the quantity. So let's say we want to update the quantity of that Heather uh, Girlfriend Material sweatshirt. So first off, we need the key. So let's, let's get that. And before I do any coding, let me show you how you get the key. So the key is going to be on the line item. So if we go into items and look at that specific item, we have this key property. And so that's what we want to get. So we're going to say let key and just set an empty variable for now. And then I'm going to say uh, cart dot get state. And then I'm going to get the state dot then data And now we're going to need to say key equals data, data dot, I believe it's data dot items. So data dot items zero. Since it's an array, we wanna grab just the first one in there. And so data dot items, grab the first one. Then we should be able to do dot key. And then if I do key, now key equals that. And so we want to update now. So let's do cart.update item and then pass that key in there. And then quantity is going to be five. And then let's run get state again run one of the older ones, lowercase c there, and if we look at that item, we should now have a quantity of five. Let me blow this up a little bit, it's actually kind of small. So we have a quantity of five here. 
So update worked. Let's clear the terminal. Next thing we want to do is go back here and we want to look at remove item. So now let's remove that. And so we still have the key saved. All right, so let's uh, do cart dot remove item and pass the key in. And we could do some more, but we're just going to do that. Have another look at the state. And now you see we've got two items, right? So we removed that specific item. And then finally, we want to run that clear items and just to clear everything out of our cart. So cart dot clear items. And we shouldn't need to pass anything else. And now if I do cart get state again, and we look, our item count is zero and our items array is empty. So that's everything. We've added a library, specifically Shopify's uh, theme cart library. Uh, we added it using import syntax. We've gone through how to use some of its functions, right? So get state, add item, remove item, update item, and clear items. Something to remember is that you can add uh, just about any library in this way. If, if, if there's a library that you want to use and it's on, uh, it's on NPM, then you should be able to add it this way. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down in the comment section below. If you found this information valuable, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you next time.